If you know me at all in my daily life, you know that I'm a Skims fanatic. I'm obsessed. I'm a true believer. And as much as I want to gatekeep, I know I can't because it's just too good to not share with all of you guys. The Fits Everybody collection by Skims is their best kept secret. The feeling is like no other underwear I've ever worn before. It's stretchy. It's soft. It kind of just melts to your body. You forget you're wearing it. Like you guys just genuinely need to feel it for yourself. Skims deserves all the hype. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you love me, after you place your order, be sure to let them know that I sent you select podcast in the survey and be sure to select on point in the drop down menu that follows. So please, if you take anything from this podcast today, it is to go get some Skims, some Fits Everybody collection. You will not regret it. Hey guys, welcome back to On Point. Today, we have a pretty intense topic that I can't lie, I have been putting off because it's not the most comfortable thing to talk about, even though it should be. Today, we're talking about sex. Ah, crazy, crazy stuff. I don't know if there's like an age limit on this, but I'm definitely going to try to talk as candid as possible. Like, I apologize in advance for the stories and details I'm about to go into. But do you know what? When I was like in middle school and high school and just like learning about all these new things, I would constantly look up on the internet. Okay, (laughs) I wouldn't look up that on the internet, but... I would always look up like how to kiss, how to make out, like I didn't know and I was so scared because it seemed like such a big deal, it was so huge, I didn't know, I didn't get it and there was no one on the internet that really talked about it in such a candid way, do you know what I mean? Like there were a couple YouTubers, that was the reason why I started my YouTube channel was to like be that kind of girl for other younger girls, so... This podcast is, like, the most in detail I'm going to, (laughs) or probably have been, like, going into sex and the details of all of it, but it's important, and it's something I would have loved to hear, so that's what I'm doing it for. We're talking about sex today, and I... (sighs) I don't know if I'm, like, honestly the biggest expert But I'd say I'm pretty average, you know, like I haven't been a crazy, crazy, crazy girl, but I'm also not a prude. So I have (laughs) quite a bit of stories and tips and tricks that I've learned along the way um, to tell you guys about. But I wanted to start off at the very beginning of when girls around you, girls, guys, whoever, start losing their virginities around you and the pressure to rush it, to feel like you're not experienced enough or you're, you need to like keep up with everyone around you because this is a pressure that I felt immensely because I was a very, very, very late bloomer um, in a lot of ways. I, you know, I dedicated my whole life to ballet. I went through a lot when I was 13 with my parents' divorce that like Boys was never a thing to me. Like, I genuinely thought I was asexual. I have journals of me in, like, eighth grade, ninth grade being like, I don't care about love or marriage or boys. Like, am I lesbian? Am I asexual? Like, I was just so confused that I never had this desire. Like, all my friends would be like, oh, my God, like, are you going to kiss him? Like, I have a crush, da, da, da. I never had that desire. And I felt so weird about it. But I had a whole other obsession, so I didn't really care. And then the more... Like, everyone in high school started making out. Like, I totally remember in seventh grade when me and my best friend had boyfriends and we were watching a movie at his house and, like, he leaned in to kiss her for the first time and they were, like, fully making out, like, tongue and everything. And I, and my my boyfriend at the time, like, looked at me to, like, pull me in for that. And I was, like, I ran to the bathroom. I was so scared. I was, like, are, are you kidding me? I'm not doing that. Like, that is so mature and intense. Like, I thought if I'm going to have my first kiss, maybe it'll be like a peck. Like, no. And I broke up with him because I didn't want to kiss him. But flash forward, I didn't end up having my first kiss till after high school. So I was a little bit traumatized. But I was just so nervous for anything intimate. 
And I'm not sure where it came from. I think it was just not like my brain was focused on other things that I didn't really like have time to think about that. But I remember I was so nervous about my first kiss. I was like, how do you make out? Where does your tongue go? I would like practice on balloons. I would practice on like the bathroom wall. I was so confused. All my friends were like, you have to just say like act like you're saying Elmo when you're when you're making out. And I'm like, so I was like, I was so nervous and I didn't want to try because I was like, all these guys have already had their first kiss and so I'm gonna be bad and everyone's gonna make fun of me. And I was just so afraid. I was so afraid in high school. And there were so many things that went into it too. Like I hated my body and I was like, if I ever were to be intimate with someone, I like, I'm so embarrassed because I hate my body and, and they're gonna see it. And that's just very personal. I also was so weird about body hair. I was like, what if I have razor burn or ingrown hairs and they see it? And we'll all go in. Well, I'll go into all of this, okay? But overall, I felt pressure in high school, but it wasn't like intense pressure because a lot of, of the ballerinas around me, a lot of the dance girls around me also were very late bloomers in that way. So I wasn't really that worried. But I'd say everyone had their first kiss of my friends already in high school. I didn't even do that. So I obviously... I wasn't rushing it. I wasn't like so nervous at whatever, but I did think like, oh, well now I'm so inexperienced. I don't know how to do this skill and everyone else is so caught up. And so it made me put it off for a while because I was like, oh, it's going to take a very specific guy. It's definitely not going to be these high school boys that have known me since elementary school and are going to judge me with their friends. Like, absolutely not. So it wasn't until after I graduated high school and kind of quit dance um, after high school for a year that I even thought about boys in that way. Like I just don't, I think my mind was occupied with so much else that I just didn't even think about it. But when I did, I remember it was the summer after high school and I was interested in this boy who was a mutual friend of a friend and we would talk and whatever. And this was my first boyfriend ever. Super sweet. Perfect situation. I ended up like sleeping over at his house seven times before we even kissed. And I remember vividly my first kiss, like it was in his bed. That was my first kiss situation. And I was so nervous and I don't know if I was like the best ever, but he was so patient with me. He also knew it was my first everything. So it was fine. He was like very, very gentle, patient, didn't want me to rush anything. So I definitely had a good situation. Like, I think being, like, I don't know, being the girl who I was at the time, like, I definitely needed to have a guy that was was like him to experience those things for the first time because I think if I would have rushed it, would have done anything with someone for, like, one of the nights that I didn't know, then I would have probably regretted it and, and felt bad about myself for, I mean, not that that's justified, but you know what I mean? It was a perfect situation. So I think we were like two to three months into our relationship when we first had sex. And I totally remember. So I was 18, like almost 19 at this point, which is pretty late for from what like my friends were like that was that was pretty late. Um, And I remember we were like in his bed and I was like, I'm ready, I guess. Like, the fuck? <laughs> this is so weird. Like. I've never felt those feelings before. Guys, we're going straight into it. I don't care. Plug your ears. <laughs> Listen, You're listening to this podcast, but plug your ears. I just remember, like, when we would make out, like, so then I was, like, you know, I started kissing, so I, was, like, was making out a bunch and, and learning the whatever, and I remember we would, like, make out, and I would feel something, like, hard, <laughs> like, pressed up against me, and I was just so confused because... Before this, like, I definitely had watched porn here and there, but I'd never, like, used a vibrator. I'd never touched myself. I've never, like, done any, like, I never had the desire or, like, a a sexual need in that way to, like, do that. So I just really didn't know how it works. I didn't know the routine of, like, how sex works. I didn't know, like, really didn't know anything. I didn't know that girls get, like, wet. I didn't know that guys get hard and that like it was just so new to me okay 
But I remember when we would make out and he was like, I could feel it against me in that way. I would like, I was turned on. And that was the first time I ever felt like a sexual desire. It was like butterflies, but like down there. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if you if you felt it, you know what, what you mean. But that's like how I knew. That was like the first time that I knew what like a sexual like turn being turned on felt like um I remember the first time being fingered <laughs> this is obviously before we had sex but he I-, I think I was bleeding a bunch I think I was bleeding a bunch when I was fingered for the first time I didn't feel good I was so confused I was like this is so weird And I remember this guy, and he knew it was my first everything, but this guy, he was like, right after he had fingered me for the first time, and I was just like, oh, like, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about, like, an orgasm, I didn't really, like, I've seen it sometimes in movies, but, like, what am I supposed to do, act it out, and, like, do the whole thing, like, no, I was so confused, and I was, like, trying to make noises, but I wasn't really, like, I was just like, oh, this is cool, like, I wasn't into it, like, in the movies when girls get, like, touched for the first time, and they're like, oh, like, they scream, I'm like, no, this was not my situation, I was, like, fully putting on an act the whole time, and I remember afterwards, like, randomly in the night, I was like, I want, I want fruit, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's, like, common when girls, like, have an orgasm, like, they, they're dehydrated after, and they want fruit, and I was like, I didn't know how to tell him that I was like, I definitely did not feel whatever an orgasm was like nothing about that felt good. Like, but I didn't tell him that I was just like, oh, yeah, like, cool, because I just didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. And we'll get into that later about like what I feel like should have been the routine of, of knowing your body before you do something like that. But you learn it through through experience. It's fine. It's all good. Um, On to losing my virginity. I remember it was like maybe two months later and I was ready he ran to 7-eleven he got a condom and I was just so confused on how this whole process worked I was just like laying on my back and (laughs) he like put on the condom and like I just don't I don't know I didn't really feel anything I was like it was over within like two minutes And then I was so confused because he would, he just stopped and it was done. And I was just, I was laying there like, I didn't, I didn't know. This is the one thing I really didn't know about sex was that when guys finish, they're, they deflate, (laughs) like they're not hard anymore and you can't continue to have sex for like at least another like 10 minutes or something until they recoup, you know? So I had no idea how this works. I didn't know it just ends like that. And... It was just so bizarre and I was shaking. I remember I was shaking. I was so like nervous. I couldn't believe that I like did this. I entered womanhood. I texted my friend right away. I was just, I felt so, I also felt so dirty and I felt so guilty for it. It's just something innately that I think women feel is this feeling that society has made sex so bad and so negative and you should wait and all this. And I just felt so womanly and and so confused, but As I had sex more, I got to know my body more. I knew what I liked, what I don't like, and I had this whole experience. And I'm so glad that my first time was with a boyfriend that I was with because I was able to, like, work through it with him. If I, like, just had sex for the first time with some random guy at a party, I would have been like, ew, sex is gross. I'm never doing that again. Like, I'm glad my first time was someone I could work with because then I got to know my body so much more and what I like and that like really helped me in a lot of ways like I think if you just hook up with a bunch of guys once you don't really learn or know anything because this I mean as far as I'm concerned every male ever is only concerned with them finishing and a lot of guys don't know how to make a woman finish so it's you know If you're just doing it one time, like, at least I know I would not have the confidence to be like, oh, this is what I like and da, da, da. Even though you should now, but at the time, I definitely would have not known. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that was, like, the first time I kind of learned about all of that. So that's the story of how I lost my virginity, but 
Next subject about sex I want to go into is birth control because that is what I then started learning about as I started to have sex. I, I'm i going to go through the whole rundown. So maybe a couple months in to us having sex or me having sex for the first time, I wanted to get on birth control because I'm someone with severe anxiety and OCD and it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter now that I have an IUD that like I have protection. You know what I mean? Like I still take a pregnancy test every week because I'm crazy and I convince myself I'm pregnant every two seconds. But anyway, (laughs) three months into this relationship, I wanted to get on birth control and I was like, I don't want the hormonal one. I knew nothing. I literally knew nothing about birth control at all. And I was like, I really don't want to do the hormonal one because I was so afraid of gaining weight because that's all I heard from girls was like, yeah, when you get on birth control, the pill, like you just gain weight and you get boobs. And again, I was like in my really bad body image time period, ballet body, wanted to be no butt, no boobs, no nothing. So I was like so worried that I would gain weight. So the only non-hormonal form of birth control um, is the copper IUD. So there's the pill that you take every day. There's the plastic IUDs that have hormones in them. There's the copper IUDs that don't have hormones in them. There's the arm implant. There's the shot you can go in and get every like, I don't know, month. I don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. There's like a ring that you can put up there every couple weeks or something. I don't know. I don't really know all the forms of birth control, but I did try to study as much as I could and I saw the copper was the non-hormonal form of a birth control. So I booked an appointment at Planned Parenthood and I went and got the copper IUD. Now, I had no idea what I was in for <laughs> with this copper IUD situation because I was so excited that it had no hormones in it. I wouldn't have to worry Getting this IUD inserted was the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. And you can go on TikTok and look up IUD. I can guarantee you every girl in the world, like, knows that it's the worst pain ever. But you just lay there. They clamp you open. And they're like, okay, like, you're going to feel one cramp now. Like, are you ready? Like, there's, like, a total of three cramps. And they're like, okay, one. And then they push something up and you're screaming and I, I I think they like did a study that it's it's the same feeling as a contraction literally so they're like okay like are you ready for the second cramp and they put it up and then you're cramping and it's terrible and awful and you want to throw up and die and faint but then they're done it's in and with the copper IUD here's the issue I didn't know the copper IUD worsens your period by like three times so whatever your normal period is it worsens it it makes you bleed so much it makes the cramps awful and it's overall it was insane and I was like okay I just need to stick it out because supposedly it gets better um over the next couple months like after six months you are kind of like adjusted so I was like okay and just stick it through and it was the worst thing ever every period I got every month was so gruesome because I never had a heavy period like I all my periods were very light like barely anything no really cramps so I was just so confused it was awful and I remember like there was one trip we went to like Vegas and I was on my period and it was so awful I almost went to the emergency room like I had to like bend over like for like 10 minutes like I was having contractions everyone had to like hold me and I was like no this can't be it I have to get this out this is not worth it at all like what am I doing and I got it out and then I heard from so many people they're like oh my god you're 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 18 and you got the copper IUD as your first form of birth control like that's normally for women that have had like three babies and they can like they get that in didn't know any of this which is crazy but I got it out thank god and I was like okay no I do want to have something that I don't have to take every day. I do want birth control, but I was like, I can't do that. So I ended up going with the plastic IUD, which there's two. There's the Kylina and the uh, Morena. And those have hormones in them. I think they last like five years. And then there's a smaller one called the Skyla that lasts 
three years and that's also hormonal. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go with the smaller one and less time, less hormones. So I got the Skyla inserted. I had to go through all that pain again. But literally instantly, well, first, instantly when I got the copper IUD out, I was at instant relief. I was like, instantly felt better. Got the plastic one in and my periods were like super light every month. It was great. I never had any negative effects from it. And I stand by the Skyla. I had this Skyla for like a year or two. Then I got it out because I was like in a phase of my life where I was like, I'm never having sex again. A week later, started dating someone, got it back in. So now I'm on that Skyla and I still have it. And I honestly love it. I don't have any negative effects from it. I haven't seen weight gain that I was so worried about. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there's no effects, you know, with it that I felt. I still get my period every month. It's just not as like heavy. It's honestly like normal. Um, yeah, that's my like experience with birth control. I remember I tried taking the pill for one week, like a year and a half ago because I was off my IUD, the second one. I got it out and I took the pill for a week and I was a bitch. Like I was so moody. I hated it. I was bleeding. Like it was so terrible. And I was like, no, I absolutely can't do this. Like I don't want to have to take this every day and, and be anxious that I didn't take it. Like I just want something that I don't have to think about. So I got my ID again and it was all great and fine. So that's my experience with birth control. What I would advise is to know that, you know, Every birth control affects every single person so differently. Like I have a friend that's been on the pill since she was 15 and has never been affected by it at all. She loves it, stands by it. I have friends that have had the arm implant that stand by it. I have friends that, um, you know, have IUDs as well. And then I have friends that just birth control does not work for them. Or I have friends that have the copper IUD and they're like, I love it so much. And I'm like, wow, impressive. That's great. But the body reacts to birth control so differently. So you kind of really do have to test everything out. You know, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to be on birth control and men would just have IUDs too. But, you know, science is just not allowing that because society hates women. <laughs> but anyway, it's a topic for another day. I remember when I first started having sex and I kind of mentioned it earlier, I was so worried about shaving and having body hair having stubbles having ingrown hairs razor burn I was like oh my god it's so embarrassing they're gonna think I'm gross like I was just so anxious about it I was like well I need to know now if I'm having sex because then I have to shave and it has to be like fresh and smooth and and I'm like I was so anxious about it I don't know what it was and what I realized over time is First of all, if you're with the right guy, they're not going to care. <laughs> like, obviously, when you're with a partner, it can be like a conversation of what is a preference. Do you know what I mean? But if you're with a boyfriend for a while and you have like some stubble or ingrown hairs or even if it's fully grown, like whatever, a man should be lucky enough to get you in bed in the first place to even care about body hair at all like <laughs> and that's genuinely the mentality that I've seen is like they're just happy to like f be with you and get you like they have the they have the pleasure of having you naked in bed like they don't care about what's going down going on down there like you think they care so much but they really just don't that's what I know for a fact and if they do care then why the fuck are you naked in bed with them do you know what I mean so that's kind of what I had to come to terms with, but obviously I was so insecure, so I was so nervous about it, and I never had an issue with any of it, whether it was grown or not. I have laser hair removal, so for a while I didn't have, like, like you know, it would grow back really sparsely, and it still does, and I still, I shave it sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Like, I just don't care, and again, the right guy won't care about shit like that. You guys, I am so obsessed and excited to tell you guys that this episode of On Point is sponsored by Skims. If you know me at all in my daily life, you know that I'm a Skims fanatic. I'm obsessed. I'm a true believer. And as much as I want to gatekeep, I know I can't because it's just too good to not share with all of you guys. The Fits Everybody collection by Skims is their best kept secret. 
The feeling is like no other underwear I've ever worn before. It's stretchy, it's soft, it kind of just melts to your body. You forget you're wearing it. Like you guys just genuinely need to feel it for yourself. I'm someone that has always been anti-bra and I've never found something that actually was comfortable and looked good until I found skims. My recent favorites are the t-shirt bra, the only t-shirt underwire bra I can wear. And I think maybe my all-time favorite is the scoop bralette, which I've had for years now. And I recently just got the razorback bralette, which has been amazing for summer because I feel like I'm wearing so many tank tops and again, so comfortable. And it's available in sizes extra, extra small to 4X. You guys need to genuinely listen to me when I'm telling you that skims deserves all the hype. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you love me, after you place your order, be sure to let them know that I sent you select podcast in the survey and be sure to select on point in the drop down menu that follows. So please, if you take anything from this podcast today, it is to go get some Skims, some Fits Everybody collection. You will not regret it. Thank you, Skims. That moves us into our next topic that I kind of touched on earlier, which is body image, which is something that I struggled a lot with when it came to being intimate for the first time and still do. Um, I think obviously sex being intimate in that way is like one of the most vulnerable things that you can do. Um, especially for the first time. So for me in high school, I was so insecure about my body. I had major body dysmorphia. I hated my thighs. I hated my stomach. I hated like everything about my body I hated. So the idea of a man seeing me naked was insane, was the most terrifying thing ever because I couldn't even stare at myself naked in the mirror, let alone ever think about doing something like that intimate with a guy. So I do think that had a lot of reason why I waited for a long time because I was just so deeply insecure Um, because it's weird because I I hated my body because it wasn't the ballerina body and then I also hated my body because I knew it wasn't what guys liked. You know, I didn't have boobs. I didn't have a butt. So it was just a double whammy. (laughs) But as I, you know, I graduated high school, I quit ballet, I became more confident. My body wasn't like such a big part of my career. Do you know what I mean? Like in ballet, it's just such a big thing. And when I kind of released that pressure, I was more willing to accept my body, to be open, to be vulnerable with somebody. Um, And it was still such a big issue for me. But I do feel like for the first time when you're being vulnerable with somebody or intimate with somebody that you should be in a good place mentally with your body or else you're not really going to be present. You're not going to really enjoy it. And that's what I think for me, obviously the first time you're going to be in your head, but it's extra in your head if you're just deeply insecure about yourself. Um, I think it can do more damage than if you would wait till you're in a more comfortable place to do something like that. But there's also a side where for me, having sex for the first time with my boyfriend and seeing how he loved my body and would call me beautiful and just loved everything about it and just genuinely loved getting me like like seeing me naked was so healing for me because I was like wow like I feel so beautiful to somebody else which obviously I should have found that within myself first and you know I eventually worked up to feeling that way but it was a nice feeling to know that like someone else saw me in that light and saw me in such a beautiful way. And and at the end of the day, I'll say the same thing that I'll say about shaving, that a man is lucky enough to get you in bed. And that's kind of all they care about. Like, that's not all they care about. Sorry, that's not all they care about. But like, they should be so lucky to have you that like, they should never care about your body. They should never care about shaving. They should never care about anything. And I genuinely think when a man is sexually turned on like that, like they're, they're not thinking about things like that. And if they are, again, that's not someone you should be with. If you're with a guy that you really think is judging your body while you're having sex, like that's not someone you should probably be having sex with that. Like, you know, I'm not someone that says, wait till marriage, don't have sex, like all the time, whatever, have a boyfriend, have sex, like do, do what you please as long as you're safe and good. But I do think like it is obviously one of the most vulnerable things you can do with a person you're literally like 
<laughs> combining bodies, like inner in inserting energy. Do you know what I mean? Like sex is energy. So if you're doing it with like a really negative, terrible person that is like making you feel insecure, then I just don't think that's necessarily good for you at all. Um, I think sex is very like energy charged. Of course, it's like a very intimate thing. And every time that I have done it with somebody that like was a one nighter type of thing or someone I don't really know, it just kind of felt it, no, I don't regret it. And it's OK. Like I, I had to have those experiences, but I don't necessarily think I would want to do it again because it's just such a vulnerable moment and it just feels so so intimate and close and it, I'm just someone that needs an emotional connection I don't have a sex drive as it is <laughs> at all I'm also on medication so like I just don't but you know if I did I still think I need to have an emotional connection with someone before I'm able to be vulnerable in that way and that's really normal but then there's some people that have a super high sex drive and it's totally different and it's more just like a physical thing so it just kind of depends on how you feel and you just have to learn that for yourself and I don't regret the moments that I've done that you know what I mean but I do think in general I like sex to be more intentional than not but also, you never know, maybe I'll enter a phase in my life where I am just want to have fun and it's fine too. But I know you're going to be so in your head, if, especially if you're insecure about your body, you're going to feel so insecure. But just know that it's really not a main focus at all. And if it is, it's not the right person to be being intimate with. And I promise you that they think you're beautiful and they should be oh so lucky to see you naked and have you naked in bed. It's like, what a gift. Do you know what I mean? Just think of yourself as a gift, which you are. You are a gift. On to the next topic, which is infections, <laughs> which is something that you do have to be aware about. You know, obviously, STDs are a very big thing. Infections are a very, very big thing. And it's something that you learn through experience, of course, but I'll give all the knowledge that I know. I've never dealt with an STD. I've been really lucky. I've never gotten a chlamydia or anything like that where I've had to go in because of something situational. Um which is amazing and I'm really grateful for that, especially in LA. It's like very, very common, of course. I would say, obviously, if it's a person you don't know and, or even if it's a person you do know and it's the first time, like use protection. Just don't, you don't want to have one stupid couple of minutes that last a lifetime of an STD. Do you know what I mean? Be smart about it. Like it's really not it, it, it could be a lifelong thing. Do you know what I mean? So obviously, use protection, be safe. But if you have a boyfriend and you're choosing not to do that, there's obviously infections that you have to be worried about. I'm someone that's very sensitive down there. Everything throws me off and I have to deal with it all the fucking time. So the first infection that I've dealt with was BV, which is really common. It's called bacterial vaginosis. And here's the deal. So the vagina, the vagina's pH level is very acidic. Um, and mm, semen, like, like cum, men's sperm, cum, whatever, is really basic. So when it en enters the vagina, um, the pH balance obviously gets thrown off. And the vagina is very sensitive. You have to keep it at a very perfect pH for it to be all working in great. So... This is really, really common. Um, for me, it, like, the symptoms of BV is just, like, really, like, a fishy smell. It's kind of, like, gray, whatever. Gross. Makes you feel disgusting. It's awful. But just go, if you're feeling that, I normally just go to the doctor and they prescribe you some pills and you're fine. Um, but there's also, like, this, there's this like gel prescription gel that I have prescribed that once in a while after sex I'll just use to make sure but if you don't have that there's these little suppositories they're called boric acid and after sex I'll sometimes just shove one up there before I go to bed and it's just kind of levels out everything cleanses it all it's it's not one of those like washes like I don't ever use a vaginal wash vaginal wipes vaginal spray any of that shit but boric acid is approved. It's just literally like a supplement in a way. 
stick it up there and that has helped me a lot but you have to do it like right after sex obviously always pee after sex that brings me back next to the UTI which I don't know if I've dealt with I think I have painful burning peeing what burning when you pee <laughs> um all of that I think there's like these test strips that you can get these like cranberry pills I take like a cranberry vagina like probiotic pill every day because I deal with this shit all the time um but again you can just go to the dermatologist or sorry, not dermatologist the gynecologist and get a prescription of these pills that just take it away in a couple days um and then of course there's a yeast infection that is the fucking worst thing ever I had my very first yeast infection like two months ago when I tell you that shit was gnarly it was so much pain I would like I was like screaming how much pain it was in I had a really bad one but again you go to the gynecologist they prescribe you these like pills you take them in two days but the biggest advice is it's not something that you can really you know once it happens it happens but there are some things you can do that are preventative obviously just don't have him come inside you but if he does then the boric acid is a great tip always pee be clean make sure he's clean all that <laughs> you know like there's definitely preventative things you can do but they're so common don't feel insecure about them I remember the first time I had BB or anything I felt so gross with myself I didn't want to leave my house I was like this is so disgusting and it's so personal and all that and you just have to understand it's it's just a normal part of of having sex it's just gonna happen it obviously sucks but just be aware keep that ph balance leveled and you should be okay <laughs> and obviously just go see a doctor if you have anything's wrong it's so super easy they, they know what's going on you get prescribed a couple pills and you're good so that's my experience with infections i've never had an std so again i don't know anything to do with that but it's obviously scary. It's like a very vulnerable, scary thing that is lifelong. Do you know what I mean? Like you can get pregnant. You can get herpes for life. You can get like sex is a lot <laughs> and it's very emotional, but I'm trying to get through all of it right now. Okay. Talking next about the actual act <laughs> of sex. So obviously there's many levels, stages you could say. I don't know the exact stages. Like I always watch movies and they're like, who's been to state? Have you been to stage four? I'm like, I don't know what that it means at all but obviously there's making out whatever there's fingering there's hand jobs there's blow jobs there's eating a girl out there's sex there's anal <laughs> there's a lot that goes down you know what I mean like there's a lot to learn and obviously it's just you kind of have to learn from experience I mean you can watch videos if you want I'm not going to promote you to do that I definitely did I was so curious but porn is obviously not the best description of what it's actually like you know and so if you watch that and that's your first kind of thing of what you know of you're gonna think it's something crazy and different and it's just not that like I don't know it's not that intense and like no don't I mean I don't watch porn but actual sex for me I can't come I, I learned this after having sex for the first time because he was always like, oh, yeah, like, because he thought that I kept having, like, I had an orgasm every time. And it was, like, my first time ever having sex. This Clearly, this guy had no idea what he was talking about. Because if he did, he would know. But I was like, I don't know if I've had an orgasm. I don't know what that feels like. It was so weird to me. I was like, I don't know how to know that. Um, And I was like, maybe I have. And I just don't really know. You'll know. You'll know. <laughs> You'll definitely know. And let me tell you, it's not going to be on your first time. And most likely, if you're in the 80% of women that can't actually finish from penetrative sex, then you probably didn't come. Because I can't. I can't just, like, finish from, from straight-up sex. There's some girls that I know that can. Good for you. I don't believe in this whole G-spot situation. I just don't. But, um, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, oh yeah. Anyway, the first couple times I had sex, I was like, I don't think this is what it feels like. I was talking to my sister about it and she was like, okay, I'm buying you a vibrator. And this is where you learn. Do you know what I mean? I do think before 
you have sex or if you had sex once and you like don't really know what you like but you're ready to explore you definitely need to learn it on yourself and I'm all for the vibrator I was like the vibrator fairy godmother to all my friends like the year after high school because when I discovered it and I was like wow (laughs) that's what it feels like this is great just a small little bullet one like the nothing too intense and I was like oh yeah, like, that's definitely what it is, and I've definitely never felt this before, um, and then I gave it, I, like, gifted one to all my friends, and they were, like, I, I basically gifted them all their first or- orgasm, it was great, but I remember I had to tell my boyfriend, I was, like, hey, I tried this, I definitely have never felt this with you, and he's, like, what do you mean, like, you definitely have, like, I've seen it, like, I know it, and I had never, he was so deep. This was a terrible situation. And then I was like, okay, well, I would you be open to bringing toys into the bed? And he was so against it. His ego was so bruised and hurt. But I'm like, you're not doing anything to help me. Like, <laughs> it's difficult. It's fucking hard. So we figured it out. So annoying. It's really normal to bring stuff into bed. I do it all the time. I still do it um, during sex. You know, it's very normal and great. And it's just a conversation to have. And hopefully, like, it should be fine. But what I've learned with men is a lot of the times with the ones that I've experienced, they just care about them finishing. And a lot of men just don't care for the woman to finish because obviously it's so much harder But, I mean, it's much sexier and much better when a guy is actually, like, wanting you to to feel good. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm all pro bringing toys into the bedroom. I love it. It's great. Oh, I don't know if you know if I ever talked about, like, oral sex. (laughs) God, I'm really getting deep. Like, I don't know who's listening to this right now. I'm scared. But oral sex I remember the first time I never wanted to give a blowjob I never wanted to do it like I never had a desire I still don't have a desire like I just don't really like it but I remember when I first did it I was so nervous I was like oh my god I don't know anything I don't know the skills like I'm, I'm I just don't know and I don't even really care to want to know because I don't even want to do it and I always hated it I was like so you're telling me I have to have that stuff in my mouth Like, that just doesn't seem humane to me. (laughs) And it still doesn't. I'm like, I don't really... Also, I wouldn't even do it to myself. I'm like, I don't know. But obviously, the first couple times I was, like, given head or, like, sorry, received head. I was so insecure. So in my head, I was like, what if I smell down there? What if it tastes bad? Like, so insecure. You guys, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Obviously, be clean. But you're just probably in your head if you're thinking all those things you know what I mean like you have to relax you have to just be confident want to feel good to even try to like feel good from it I know a lot of my friends that that like experienced that for the first time are like it didn't even feel good like I don't even like it because you have to like fully be confident and not in your head at all and you also feel so much pressure and you're so guilty for like not doing it fast enough and you're like oh my god like he's working so hard there's so much that goes into it but when you do and you realize what's right and you tell the person what's right, then it's great. It's amazing. Um, but I have a funny story with blowjobs. So I've always hated doing them. I literally still hate them. But I had a little phase when I was single where I was hooking up with this random guy that I met through a friend. And we had been on like two dates and I was wild at this time (laughs) I was on one I was on one at this time and we had sex and he couldn't finish which has never happened to me in my life but it does it happens and that's a whole nother thing we can talk about but he didn't finish and I was like oh no like this is like obviously it's the most vulnerable vulnerable insecure thing when like you can't pleasure a guy it obviously sucks but he was like, yeah, it's because, like, maybe if you just try to give me head. And I'm like, okay, like, and I didn't want to do that. I'm not going to do that with someone like I just barely met. But I felt bad. I felt guilty. So I'm doing it. And 
he just is not satisfied. It's like, maybe I need to sit at the end of the bed because that's like what I normally do. And then he's like forcing it. It was, it was so terrible and he couldn't come. He still couldn't come. And at this point I'm crying. Like I'm literally crying and he just pushes me away and like does it to himself, like closing his eyes, like doing it to himself while I'm just sitting there crying. This was so traumatizing, you guys. I never saw this guy again, obviously, but like this shit scarred me so deep that in my next relationship, I never wanted to do it. I was so insecure that I was bad at it. Clearly, this guy either had a porn addiction or something or was on medication where he couldn't like this guy clearly had issues, but I like I don't even think he ended up even finishing at all. But anyway, this traumatized me so bad into my next relationship that I was talking to my therapist about it. And I was like, well, it's kind of a problem because I don't ever want to do it. And, you know, he does it for me and I want to like add stuff to our, our routine. But like, I'm so nervous and I'm so insecure about it. And she was like, well, that's terrible. Like a big thing about confidence is, is being confident in such a vulnerable moment in your life. So we need to fix this for you. I have an amazing sex teacher <laughs> that I'm going to give you her contact and she's she lives near you and you can just go go take a private class with her I'm like oh my god <laughs> this is amazing like obviously I've never done anything like this but like I really want to I want to be good at it so I guys I sign up this is the craziest story ever I sign up for this class it was just a private I was like I'm not going to a group setting right now thank god I didn't go to a group class so I go to this woman's apartment it's like very like normal apartment but she's like 60 in her 60s okay and she's so casually talking about it which is so nice and and like obviously you just want to be like okay we all know the elephant in the room is that we're talking about this thing but like she doesn't care because it's her job and she takes me to this the dining table and there's plates like placemats set up and a plate and she literally like like takes a napkin and puts it in her lap and she like open like shows me this box and she's like okay like pick your ethnicity and your size <laughs> and she had like so many different dildos all ethnicities and all sizes with a suction cup on the bottom and a on a plate so you suction cup the thing into the plate and she's like she has her own too and she's like going ham on it like showing me what to do and i'm just like i i just can't like i i couldn't get myself to do it but this was the funniest experience of my life. She had lube. She had everything ready to go. And we were both like working on this, on the our little things together. It was insane. I've never had an experience like that in my life. But I, I went home and obviously like tried to like practice what I learned. And I think it made it better. I think I kind of had to just do that to like work through that trauma that I had. I don't think I was ever bad at it. Do you know what I mean? It was just that one experience that really fucked me up but I cannot believe I did that. Like, I still, like, tell this story to my friends to this day and we laugh about it because, like, that's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Like, I, I definitely had to do it. It was insane. It was insane. But anyway, it's obviously such a vulnerable moment. There's tips and tricks to learn. I don't know if I'm the right podcast to talk about that. Like, we all know that there's podcasts that talk more about that in detail. Um... But again, it's just learning what your partner likes and asking them and not being afraid to ask them. I know it's so embarrassing and also so vulnerable for you to say like, oh, this is what feels good or this doesn't feel good. But at the end of the day, both of you guys want to pleasure each other and you want each other to feel good. And like if there's things that can help that, why not? Do you know what I mean? Like you have to just have the conversations and it's obviously so awkward, but it, it like in the long run, it's so worth it to just talk to your partner, make sure you're both knowing what's what's good for each other. Do you know what I mean? But I will say it is really hard for a girl to have an orgasm, at least for me. Like I I sometimes most of the time I honestly don't. And I and I'm OK with that because obviously it still feels good. But it does take a lot of effort and energy for me to actually do it. I'm also on Zoloft, which makes my sex drive like negative levels. So it is difficult sometimes. But again, like just have conversations and talk about it and make sure that you're in a comfortable space and like let your mind you have to your mind cannot feel a bit of insecurity or else it's never going to happen you just have to like fully relax into it do you know what I mean but it's fucking hard and we're I mean for me I'm also so young I'm like 
don't they say that your best sex is in like your 30s or 40s? I don't know. I heard that somewhere. I feel like we have so much more to cover, but I'm out of time. So I feel like I might do another episode next week, maybe where I have you guys ask me questions and answer, give you my advice, but I hope you enjoyed. (laughs) It's such a funny topic. It's so vulnerable, so awkward all the time. I get it, but it doesn't have to be. It's a human thing. It's actually what brings life into this world. It should be beautiful and great. Um, And sometimes it's not beautiful and great, and that's okay too. But just remember, you're a gift. If someone gets you in bed, they should be oh so lucky. Don't forget that. No reason to be insecure. Be safe. Be clean. And that's about all the advice I have for you. You just got to kind of learn from experience. Sorry. I know it sucks, but I've been there. I've been there when like before sex, I was just so fucking nervous that I was going to be bad at it and everything was going to be bad. But it's just shit you have to learn through experience. You know what I mean? All right. That's it on sex, guys. I love you so much. I'll talk to you next week. And I love you. Bye.